Number five, new species? So apparently there's a new genus and species that's been found. I love it when they make announcements like this, but only with dinosaurs, you know what I mean? It also makes things way more scary, doesn't it? Scientists have discovered the remains of a mysterious truck-sized shark which swam the coastlines of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans around 20 million years ago. That's not a great white or a meg. The newly discovered species is a close relative of the megalodon we're used to seeing and the ancient ancestor of today's great white sharks. Perfect, a hybrid shark. That's what I'm hearing, right? Isn't there like four movies about this already? Like this is Jurassic Park 5, Megalodons in New Jersey. I swear I've seen this. Like we know where this is going. Fortunately for us, there's about 45 million years worth of a gap between all three, leaving scientists scratching their heads on how the shark even evolved. Like when did it die out or did it even die out? Could this be the new Megalodon sightings people have but just like the new sister species? This new species has been named Megalolama paradoxodon. That's pretty sweet. There's gonna be a new metal band with that name soon, just wait. A brand new genus of its own as well. The species name, Paradox, refers to the fact that the shark emerged so suddenly in the geological record after appearing to have split from its closest relative around 45 million years earlier. A paradox. So it's like the daughter of a Meg and the grandmother of a great white. Only five of the species' teeth have been found in California, North Carolina, Japan, and Peru. Based on the remains, the researchers think that the shark grew to around five meters long, making it smaller than its relative, but still absolutely megalithic. Like almost a city bus size. Most importantly, the discovery tests our understanding of the shark family tree because the megalodon and megalolamna are so closely related, scientists are still arguing about the missing branches to said family tree. Yeah, that's horrifying, all right? Number four, origins. All right, let's take a deep dive here before we talk about these new fears that I've recently developed. Also, if you like what we do here on the channel, Hulk smash that like button. It really helps us out here. We like to keep it spooky around here, so let us know down in the comments what your biggest fear of the seven seas are. If it's creepy, if it's crawly, and it swims, Send her over my way. Before these TikTok videos and Google Earth finds, the Megalodon was first written about in 1835 by Swiss American geologist Louis Agassiz, who named the species Carcharodon Megalodon. He was the first one. He was the OG on the case. And of course, the first Megalodon teeth, such as those found by the HMS Challenger in 1873, were dated in 1959 by zoologist Vladimir Cherneski to be around 11,000 to 25,000 years old, popularizing claims of the megalodon still hiding out there somewhere. Megalodons are thought to have reached at least 20 meters in length and lived from about 23 to 2 million years ago. The meg, however, wouldn't be known by its scientific name until the late 1990s, when scientists placed it in its own genus, Carcharoslus. Some paleontologists think that the megalodon and modern white sharks evolved within the same lineage, but now, obviously with this new species found, it's kind of thrown off the family tree a tad. Yeah, they don't know if they should put it like near the ancients or like 60 million years ago megatooth territory, or closer to what we see in the movie Jaws. So they're kind of confused. Somewhere in the middle, give or take, that's like a lot of wiggle room, you know? A lot of years there. In 2008, scientists conducted an experiment to determine the bite force of the great white shark to see what the megalodon could have done damage-wise. The largest great white recorded could produce 18,000 newtons of force versus the megalodon of 180,000 newtons of force. Plus all the shaking around sharks do to rip their food in half. Yeah, all of a sudden I understand the urgency of all these studies. That's horrifying. Number three, new teeth. Okay, so I thought these things were just like hung up on a wall in a museum somewhere. Nope, they're finding these things like every day. Jonathan Valentine found his first megalodon tooth after just like 10 minutes of one of his most recent dives. The fossil hunter has found several huge fresh teeth from the extinct megalodon in North Carolina last month. Jonathan Valentine, who runs the Digging Science website, said in a recent video that his haul included a tooth that was seven inches long and another that was six inches. Dude, that's the size of like your whole hand and like one tooth. One in a mouth of hundreds. That's a big set of jaws. Megalodon tooth finds usually measure between three and five inches, but our boy here got lucky with these two big tooths. According to the Florida Museum of Natural History, on his North Carolina trip, Valentine explored coastlines that form bays and canals that used to be deep water ocean floors millions of years ago. Huge megalodon teeth can be found in these embayments. Florida is typically where he would explore to find megalodon teeth and ice age fossils, but these two giant gems were apparently 
primarily laying in what was a shallow nursery during the Miocene period, where big female megalodons would come in and have their babies and then ship back out to sea. Those babies would have a variety of different foods to eat and they wouldn't have to worry about other deep water predators being so close to shore. They'd be able to just chill out, grow humongous, and then cruise into the ocean at their own pace. Apparently these waters in North Carolina would be like a nursery and then a feeding frenzy on local whales. Yeah, Valentine said, quote, holy that thing's huge. That thing is insane. That's a big tooth. Wow, that's a pretty good start to this trip. Yeah, I'd say so, dude. You found one of the biggest teeth ever found, and in North Carolina. Also, isn't it scary that they weren't like in the middle of the Atlantic somewhere on a ship? They were like on the shores of North Carolina. Terrifying. Number two, bigger in the cold. A new study reveals that the very, I hope, extinct megalodon or megatooth shark grew to larger sizes in cooler environments than in warmer areas. Kind of goes against what you think when you think about sharks, right? Florida, Bahamas, Mexico, yeah, nope. Yeah, they could be anywhere in the Atlantic or even up by the North Pole. DePaul University's paleobiology took a look through time and space at the body size patterns of the megalodon. In reality, this species is only known from teeth and vertebrae that we found from fossil records. We don't really have a good idea of what it's actually girth looked like. Accepted scientifically though, the thing was at least 50 feet and maybe bigger. The new study re-examined published records of megalodon teeth along with their estimated total body lengths. In the mid 1880s, German biologist Carl Bergman came up with a theory that larger animals thrive in cooler climates because their size, naturally, would help them retain heat more. Therefore, the bigger fish would be in the cold. I catch your drift. Walruses, whales, I get it, I get you. Seems like this at first that the impression that scientists were under was the colder the area, the bigger the animal, therefore the longer and better it would thrive. However, with new studies, it shows that mostly of the unidentified nursery areas that the megalodon liked are all located near the equator in warmer waters, making it even smaller than possibly the ones that were swimming in the cold. It's possible that megs were actually much smaller than the nursery's teeth found in the colder areas, making the cold therapy theory true? It's hard to tell with this creature because like, it swam mostly wherever it wanted. Cold, warm, it didn't care. If it was hungry, it was coming for you. The results of the university indicates that the modern climate change is rapidly accelerating marine habitat shifts to more polar latitudes in apex predators, such as sharks and whales, up near really, really cold areas. This would also lend evidence to the specific diet of the megalodon, which was mostly large whales, who also live in the deep, dark cold. DePaul's conclusion is that not all geographically different megalodon individuals grew to gigantic sizes equally, but the colder creatures were also much, much larger swimming in the cold water, ultimately securing Bergman's OG rule. All right, so the Keys trip is back on then. Warm water for the win. They don't swim there. Or they do both. Oh. And the number one spot, alive? Could we have just found evidence on sonar to prove that there's something absolutely terrifying and massive still swimming the seas? We've found teeth in recent years and last month that have been relatively fresh. We've seen Google Earth blurs signifying that the waters can be really deceiving. Now, researchers think that they caught a little glimpse at something very weird and very big. Apparently sonar showed a 50 foot shark nearing a boat off New England waters. Shark researchers are accustomed to surprises, but the Atlantic shark Shark Institute was a little taken aback when something resembling an extinct megalodon shark appeared to just swim under them on sonar. Of course, flabbergasted after picking up what appeared to be a massive 50 foot shark sized blurb, the sea scanners underneath the boat were fritzing. An Instagram post detailing the alleged discovery is currently making waves on a recent shark research trip. Researchers said, quote, we were amused to see the shape appear on our fish finder for several minutes. Researchers from the Atlantic Shark Institute detected this anomaly in an undisclosed area. Unfortunately, the scientists' excitement quickly faded after the monster just turned out to be a massive monster school of fish. Whew, just sitting in the same spot for a while. Yeah, thank God. Researchers said, quote, We waited for more of the rods to go off. However, much to our disappointment, the shape just started to transition into a large school of Atlantic mackerel that hung around the boat for about 15 minutes. That's terrifying. Yo, can you imagine just a massive murky shadow under your boat for just minutes on end not moving? Just sitting there. I'm pretty sure I would just start playing the Titanic music. You know what I mean? It's been a pleasure, gentlemen. Okay, so no actual Megs caught yet, thank God. But it seems like we keep finding these remains, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but not necessarily a good thing. The cool thing, however, is each month there's more and more studies actively searching for this thing. To be honest, I hope it's gone, gone forever. 10-foot hammerheads are scary enough, aren't they? Like eyes on the side of their heads? 
That's terrifying. Number five, the Lernean Hydra. I'm no Hercules per se. Yeah, nothing. But thankfully, actually, because those are pretty big shoes to fill. Because that dude had to be brave beyond just like deep breaths and good pep talks. Guy had to literally fight like a 10 story condo building. How does one dude equipped with a club and a sword kill a 10 story building with teeth and three heads? Well, five heads. Well, 10 heads. Depending on how many you cut off, I guess. I guess that's why his name will be remembered and mine will be lost at sea. I guess he was a demigod, half powerful, half regular. A little unfair. By the way, which Hercules did you grow up on? I grew up on the Disney version and Kevin Sorbo. Ugh, oh, what a hunk. But there's been a lot, including the ancient real guy. She's known as simply the Hydra. As a serpentine water monster in Greek and Roman mythology, it's terrifying. Its lair was at the Lake of Lerna, also known to be the entrance of the underworld. Yikes. In the myth, the monster is killed by Heracles, Hercules, as the second of his 12 labors. Okay, so this guy did it and then went on to go and do like 10 more. 10 and 0. Like, how hard can it be, right? I mean, it does have multiple heads. Yeah, it does have that. Also, apparently has poisonous breath and blood so violent that uh, its scent is even deadly. Later versions of the Hydra story added regeneration to the monster's abilities too, so it can just start growing heads back at will. For every head chopped off, the Hydra would regrow two heads. So every time the Meg bites a head, there's two more. Another two are growing, yeah. Good thing this thing was hungry and swallows whales whole because uh, that's gonna be a lot of protein. Number four, Jormungandr. Keeping it in the mythology department, we head up a little north. Jormungandr, AKA huge monster. Also known as the Midgard Serpent or the World Serpent. It is a sea serpent and the middle child of Loki and giantess Angraboda. And those middle children, huh? Always the problem, kids. I would know. I am one. According to the prose Edda, Odin took Loki's three children by Angraboda, Fenrir, Hel, and Jormungandr, and tossed Jormungandr into the great ocean. The serpent grew so large that it was able to surround the entire earth and grasp it in its own tail, as it's referred to as, well, the World Serpent. And apparently, when it releases its tail, Ragnarok will begin. Yeah, basically a destruction to the end of the world. Yeah, all this rich history is so heavy and gloomy, isn't it? Isn't there like a, the sun will shine like California for all to enjoy? Like, where's that written down? Nowhere, huh? Just cataclysms and monsters. Jormungandr's arch enemy is the thunder god, Thor. And apparently, a megalodon too. Cause let's face it, a giant serpent versus a four story great white, it would definitely be a good fight. I think if Thor showed up and started smashing up both, it would literally be the best Marvel Universe movie yet. Another encounter comes when Thor goes fishing with the giant Hymir. When Hymir refuses to provide Thor with bait, he strikes the head off Hymir's largest ox to use as his bait. Okay, easy, roid rage. Sheesh. They row to a point where Hymir fishes, he prepares his fishing line and a large hook and baits it with the ox head, which Jormungandr bites. Thor then yanks the serpent up from the water and the two throw hands. Okay, so it sounds like it isn't that big. I mean, it's huge, but the wrapping around the planet has got my dimensions off. Maybe it was like a metric versus imperial thing back then. I don't know, what do you think? Comment down below who would win because when it gets into mystical powers and stuff, it becomes a little unfairly matched, no? Number three, Cthulhu. Come on, we know this guy. Now this would be a good fight. This is sort of fathomable. Well, kinda. An extinct shark versus a made up ender of worlds. Cool, let's do that. Basically a giant humanoid octopus dragon versus the Carcharasless Megalodon, a triplex size apex predator. It's definitely gonna be in Vegas and pay per view. I'll tell you that for free. Cthulhu is a fictional cosmic horror entity thought up by the twisted mind of cosmic horror writer H.P. Lovecraft. First introduced in his short story called The Call of Cthulhu, published by the American pulp magazine Weird Tales in 1928, he's like the first creature Lovecraft pondered up. He's terrifying. He's supposed to bring Armageddon upon us when he wakes up from the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, again, not all sunshine and rainbows with these stories. Actually, like, ever with these stories. Cthulhu is a great old one, almost the god of all gods in these stories. All these characters intertwine and apparently he's our last call. Lovecraft depicts it as a gigantic entity worshipped by cultists in the shape of a green octopus, dragon, humanoid, bipedal creature. And it's like 10 stories high. Yeah, like massive. Like us looking at toy army men. The Lovecraft universe, aka the Cthulhu mythos, its appearance alone is enough to haunt your dreams. Lovecraft describes this guy as a face full of octopus-like feelers, a scaly, rubbery looking body, sharp claws on its hands and feet, and of course, dragon's wings. So it can fly and swim. In other words, the worst thing you can imagine. 
yeah. Cthulhu can fly, which he has on the Meg for sure. And also the mind control. I don't know how Shark's brains works, but Cthulhu gets in there. Yeah, you're in trouble, Sharky. Number two, the Leviathan. Okay, so we're diving into some very sacred texts now. The Bible. In said pieces of scripture, there's a tale of a giant creature that could swallow up cities, apparently, and is also an awesome roller coaster at Canada's Wonderland. Gotta try it if you haven't been on it yet. This twisty, turny, vicious monster was actually modeled after this twisty, turny, vicious monster, the Leviathan, the second of the great monsters described in the book of Job. This Leviathan, Leviathan, is an absolute unit of a sea monster who's impervious to literally any human weapon. I mean, what were the weapons back then though? Like bows and arrows, swords maybe, little pokey things, you know? It's not gonna do much. Apparently locusts too, yeah, those are terrifying. This Leviathan breathes fire. It emits smoke from its nostrils and it's related to another ancient monster called Lotan, a seven-headed giant serpent who's represented as pure chaos. I mean, what Bible creature isn't terrifying though? Was this giant sea snake a water dragon? Cause apparently it's something like 300 miles long according to the Bible. So it's like Jormungandr territory, but longer. Maybe it's the same creature told by two different peoples? Oh, <gasps> mind blown. Again, the Megalodon I think would just chomp this thing and dive deep down to the twilight zone and it's lights out. We've seen Jaws, right? Yeah, picture that, but like 40 times the size. Yeah, we're gonna need a bigger boat. Number one, Godzilla. I had to, obviously, we're having fun here today. Godzilla, yes, of course, the king of kings, AKA Kaiju, originates from a series of Japanese films. The character first appeared in the 1954 film Godzilla and became a worldwide pop culture icon ever since. Appearing in a ton of different media, 32 films, four American films, video games, novels, comic books, TV shows, you name it. Godzilla has been, like I said, the king of king of all monsters. Of course, a phrase first used in Godzilla, king of monsters. Godzilla is enormous. It's destructive. It's a prehistoric sea monster awakened and empowered by nuclear radiation. With the nuclear incidents of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the Lucky Dragon 5 incident, Godzilla doesn't really like nukes. Yeah. The amphibious reptilian monster is basically based around a concept of a dinosaur erect, standing up, very tall. Of course, a bony plated back and tail, and let's not forget the special abilities Godzilla has as well. Atomic heat beams, or as I like to call it, stank breath. Dude had tonsil stones so bad, nuclear energy generates from them. Well, not really, but inside of his body using electromagnetic force to concentrate it into a laser radioactive beam. Amphibious, of course, so it swims and breathes underwater, which is gonna come in handy. Immune to conventional weapons and can regenerate, yeah. And it's massive. Of course, Godzilla was said to average around 150 feet tall. In the American version, Godzilla is like 400 feet tall. Like, just a little bit bigger. This is kind of a no-brainer here, obviously, right? This little sunfish would have nothing on the king. Number five, the HMS Challenger. Between 1872 and 1876, the HMS Challenger became the first expedition organized to gather data on a variety of ocean features, including ocean temperatures, seawater chemistry, ocean currents, marine life, and the geology of the seafloor itself. For this, a British Navy Corvette was converted into the first dedicated oceanographic ship, equipped with its own laboratories, microscopes, and other scientific tools actually below deck. Sweet. Among the Challenger's expedition's discoveries was one of the deepest parts of the ocean, the infamous Marianas Trench in the Western Pacific, where the seafloor is at least four miles deep, the deepest place in all of the oceans. It's now called Challenger Deep, if it's 11 miles or more down. And of course, they also found some teeth at the bottom of the ocean floor. Yeah, scary. Some big ones too. The Megatooth Shark, aka the Megalodon, was estimated to have gone extinct in the early Pleistocene epoch roughly 4 million years ago. Despite this, there have been reports of some pretty fresh looking Megalodon teeth from the late Pleistocene going into the Holocene. Yeah, I'm just gonna say it, this thing's probably not even dead, you know, at all. Like, we've found it in every epoch. Yeah. It has long been known that the teeth were misdated, although using invalid techniques and technology. Phew. But not that far off. So like, those were all pretty fresh teeth then, huh? Yeah. Cryptozoologists have agreed that the teeth seem to be between 11 to 20,000 years old. Hmm. From another sample they had from Madagascar, scientists are still scratching their heads at these numbers. So what made it survive millions of years, but then go extinct in the last couple thousand? I don't know. Not really sure if the uh, math adds up on that one. Something's definitely fishy here. Number four, TikTok. 
Thankfully for us, social media has us glued to our phones every two seconds of the day. Good for some things, bad for others. Great for filming UFOs and Karen's freakouts, bad for self esteem and nearsightedness. It's a balancing act, you know? This next video and story comes from a recent TikTok video that has a ton of people in awe. Alex Albrecht, who was on board, managed to capture this eerie footage of an enormous creature as it swam near the surface, alongside and eventually under the ship, this SSF Corwith Kramer. Albrecht then shared this clip to his TikTok page saying, quote, sailed six weeks in the Atlantic, saw this big f***ing shark. Great title, dude. Why didn't Discovery Channel steal that title, you know? Right to the point. Albrick, alongside other students on the ship, owned and sailed by the Sea Education Association. We're doing a program on marine biodiversity and conservation and sailed from the Gulf Coast of Florida up to Woods Hole, Massachusetts, which is where this Leviathan was snapped. Hard to picture a Megalodon near Boston, you know? This clip has already gone viral with more than 37 million views and a ton of people claiming the animal is actually a huge basking shark. Oh my, okay, I, uh, I thought we really found her here on this one. A basking shark though, okay. Huge one. Apparently this is the second largest fish in the ocean. First being whales or this megalodon creature we're after. But this shark is like 40 feet. That's like an 18 wheeler with a trailer. These fish are massive people and the megalodon is apparently like twice the size of that. Yeah, 60 feet to 80 feet. That's some deep blue sea right there. Number three, Marianas Trench. A giant shark caught on camera scouring the bottom of the Marianas Trench has sparked some debate if megalodons still exist or not. The huge shark has been seen swimming over what seems to be an abandoned shark cage, but others say the creature is nothing more than a common sleeper shark, which can survive at least 2,000 meters beneath the surface. A 50 foot shark, one mile down the Marianas Trench. Okay, that's, that's pretty deep. If the Meg was still around, I would definitely be checking the deepest part of the ocean since we don't really know or see that often. Many think this is a Pacific sleeper shark. Definitely looks like one, but the size here is a problem. Pacific sleepers or Greenland sharks as they're known only grow up to about 20 feet. The shark in this video is apparently like 50 feet long. Now that's based off a human sized cage under its belly. I don't know. This definitely seems like the chillest megalodon I've ever seen. Sleeper shark definitely sounds more fitting. Just, you know, cruising at the bottom, just chilling. I don't know, after watching this video a couple times, something's not adding up. Looks too old and docile to be a great white's great grandfather, you know? Also, I don't know about these cage dimensions. Looking a little small to me. What I'm taking from this video is that sharks are chilling at the deepest part of the ocean. That's what I've learned here. That there isn't water deep enough for a shark. Also, Meg's like shallower, warmer water where there's like an abundance of life. I don't know, I'm not sold. Still absolutely terrifying. The green filter makes it look like a lake too. That's horrifying and spooky. I'm calling a bust on this one though. What do you think? Number two, deep blues sea. Divers found something. It's not a treasure, but it's a 22 foot ocean monster known now as deep blue. Aw, that's cute. That's a cute name. Deep Blue, I like it. She was discovered swimming dangerously close to a pair of brave divers in Guadalupe, Mexico. Deep Blue is a female great white shark that is estimated at six and a half meters long and in her 50s. The shark was first spotted in Mexico by researcher Mauricio Padilla. Deep Blue was even featured on Discovery Channel's Shark Week. All right, Hollywood star, you made it to the big leagues, kid. The shark was spotted by marine biologists studying tiger sharks near the island of Oahu, Hawaii. Much bigger than a tiger tiger shark of course and too big to be a great white, deep blue is now the largest shark apparently ever discovered and also largest to swim next to. Videos show the shark as calm and non-aggressive around humans. Yeah, I would never lead with that though, you know? Oh yeah, that shark? No, no, super friendly. Jump on in. The video of researchers touching and holding onto her while swimming next to her has brought on some heavy internet criticism though from shark researchers. A marine biologist criticized the behavior saying the shark should never be interfered with, stating that it's an enormous wild predator and that repeated contact from humans can overstress the animal. Okay, she's got a good point. However, I don't think that that apex predator is really stressed about anything, you know? This thing is a swimming tank. I agree though, respect it from a distance, you know? Take some pictures, maybe a discreet sample, and then piss off. Okay, so biologists thought we finally had her, huh? Maybe found a megalodon. Nope, just a massive great white. Makes you think though, between deep blue and 11,000 years ago, these monstrosities were just surfing the coasts. Think they're still out there? And our number one spot, bite size. The blue whale is the largest living mammal on earth, right? Well, apparently during the pandemic, we found a massive blue whale in Maui, South Africa, 
that had washed up on shore, and the weirdest part, it was bitten in half. Oh yeah, yeah, blue whales don't eat other blue whales. So what could have possibly bitten off more than it could chew? For some numbers here, the blue whale was like 30 meters long. Yeah, that's like four shipping containers. The chew job was also not caused by plankton eating teeth. These were shredders. It must have been a much bigger creature to bite it in half. The mystery of the attack will never be solved as proof slowly decays, but we know that there's a shark out there at least the size of a blue whale. Further investigation has found evidence that the chomp could have been an oversized great white shark. The mystery of the incident, of course, has caused widespread interest and confusion among animal lovers and Poseidon himself. Scariest part, the shark apparently bit off the tail of the whale and then dragged it down by its face. Social media sites reported the incident. The story went viral. Some people were terrified that a creature that size could attack a whale. That size, I mean, that's the animal kingdom for you. It's ruthless. Scientists now have concluded that white sharks are now the top predators of blue whales in the southern African waters, making this just another day at the office for old deep seas buddy. Hey, fish gotta eat, right? Protein. Okay, so now we just got a really, really big great white swimming out there, eating whales in half. Perfect. Nice. Yeah, not a meg though. No, no, no. Just a giant great white eating whales. Again, I'm not anxious at all. <laughs> number five, the mystery sea monster. Starting off at number five, a research crew in Australia was studying the movement pattern of sharks, attaching a tracking device to a nine foot long shark to observe and report on its migration habits. What they found was a lot more compelling and a lot more disturbing than just monitoring a shark's Fitbit. After attaching the device, the team found that the shark had rose in temperature steeply and it also descended approximately 2,000 feet below where it should be where it then stayed for the better part of a week. Surely it was just doing a little sharky sightseeing. Occasionally ascending and descending. From here, the trail goes completely cold. No data, no insights. Until about four months later, the tracking device and absolutely nothing else washed up on a beach in Southern Australia. The crew was completely stumped, no answers. Something had eaten their shark, that much was obvious, but what? Well, their best guess isn't gonna provide you much comfort because their hypothesis was that it must have been a much larger, much meaner shark preying on a smaller one like a schoolyard bully. Which is six kinds of terrifying if the best thing scientists can come up with to explain this is, oh there's a gigantic shark with a taste for other sharks swimming around and oh yeah, we have no idea what it actually is and to be honest, we have no idea where it could be. It's great when scientists are kind of just throwing guesses at the wall. Unfortunately, no brighter insights about just what exactly it was that ate that original shark can be found because, well, they just never found the thing. So whatever did eat it could very well still be out there. Let's just be thankful that whatever the thing that ate it was, it's hiding out in Australia. And to our Australian viewers, maybe just uh, check the water a little bit before your next surfing trip for me, okay? For me. Number four, the Merino Rocks Shark. At number four, also in Australia, that's gonna be a recurring theme, a shark conservation research team was observing local sharks from above in a helicopter surrounding Merino Rocks, a beach on the coast of southern Australia, when one of the researchers spotted a gargantuan great white circling just outside the beach. The shark was estimated to be seven meters long, or 23 feet. Now, great whites rarely extend past 20 feet, so 23 feet was astronomical, making this thing one of the largest great white sharks ever recorded on camera. The shark actually matches up pretty decently with the size of the shark from Jaws, which, little Hollywood trivia for you, was intentionally designed to be out of proportion and oversized, which is beyond horrifying if the things we created to intentionally be scary looking is being outdone daily by Mother Nature's own creativity and what she's got cooking underwater. Now, the helicopter crew attempted to wrangle this shark out to sea to get a closer look on it and maybe lock it in a steel vault somewhere, but were unsuccessful in any of their attempts to wrangle this thing. So, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that means whatever this shark is, it's still out there swimming around Merino Rocks, hopefully not getting up to too much trouble. Horrifying to think about a pleasant day at the beach and then coming up close and personal with a shark, you know, big enough to swallow you whole and then eat two more of you if it felt like it. Number three, TikTok's Massachusetts Megalodon. Recently, a marine biodiversity student and musician, Alex Albrecht, was on a research cruise with fellow marine biology students when they made a jaw-dropping discovery. And like most people, upon discovering something potentially life-changing, swiftly posted the video to TikTok. Looking over the railing of a cruise ship, swimming around the ship is a behemoth of a shark, estimated to measure in at around 26 feet looking truly prehistoric as it swims around the ship. The video is taken up from the rigging of the ship just to give you a good sense of just how stupendously large this thing is. 
In the video, one of the researchers can even be loudly heard asking if that's the famed Megalodon swimming around them. Now, obviously after this video was posted, it went viral pretty quick. I mean, it had the attention of everybody, garnering up to 36 million views and catching the attention of shark aficionados, megalodon hunters, and people with a lot more shark authority than me, who suspect that the shark in question is not the legendary megalodon, but in fact a basking shark, one of the largest species of sharks on the planet, dwarfed only by the whale shark in terms of sheer size. Now, you look at this thing, and it's pretty easy to understand why a shark this big could have shocked a fully stocked crew of marine researchers, having them convinced that they've gone toe to tooth with the Meg. Basking sharks, luckily enough, are docile and ambivalent towards humans, but look at the inside of this thing. Does this not look like something out of your absolute worst nightmares? Like something out of an HP Lovecraft story? This thing could swallow me whole and not even realize it had done it. It's got a mouth like a black hole. The only comfort I'm finding is that if this thing is swimming around the shores of Boston, if it causes any trouble, surely Mark Wahlberg is there to protect us. Number two, Mariana's Trench Sighting. Now besides sharing the name with the Canadian smash hit pop band, the Mariana's Trench is notable for being the deepest trench in our oceans, meaning if anything absolutely spine chilling was living under the radar, away from the prying eye of research crews, there is a fairly good chance it would be swimming around down here. I mean, over 80% of our oceans remain unexplored, and in that uncharted 80%, scientists theorize that roughly two-thirds of all oceanic life has yet to be discovered. It's a testament to just how deep and dark our oceans run, so it's not uncommon for theorists to suspect that this is where the mighty prehistoric megalodon could be hiding. And footage released in 2018 might be the evidence to prove that. In this footage, a behemoth of a shark can be seen swimming by what looks to be an abandoned shark cage of some sort. And from the image and video, the shark dwarfs the cage. Its head alone conjures up the imagery we expect when thinking of the mighty megalodon. I, I mean, just look at the size of this thing. You can move a family of four inside that thing's mouth and still have room for a sublet on the side. Now the clip is a bit shocking and obviously got a lot of attention on it, meaning experts peer in and the clip doesn't have everyone convinced. Some skeptics believe that the shark in question is not the megalodon, but rather a species of shark called a sleeper shark, another species of enormous shark that can grow up to sizes of up to 23 feet long and lives thousands of feet below sea level, adapting to extreme temperatures, even able to live underneath volcanoes. If a shark as extreme as the sleeper shark is swimming around there, it doesn't take too much of a stretch of the imagination to wonder if it's joined by anything like the megalodon. Number one, the 1918 sighting. Our number one spot is also our oldest recorded entry and a story that popularized the modern hunt for the prehistoric titan. In the early 19th century, a group of lobster fishermen outside of, I mean, come on, we all know where it took place. Do I even need to say it? Australia. The story took place in Australia. Almost all of these did. These lobster fishermen were shaken to their core when the men claimed that they had seen a shark of preposterous size. Naturalist David Stead provided a written description of the sighting, which is what we've been going on writing that the men had been at work on the fishing grounds, which lie in deep water, when an immense shark of almost unbelievable proportions put in an appearance, lifting pot after pot containing many crayfishes and taking, as the men said, the pots, mooring lines, and all. These crayfish pots, it should be mentioned, were about three feet, six inches in diameter and frequently contained from two to three dozen good-sized crayfish, each weighing several pounds. The men were all unanimous that this shark was something the like of which they had never dreamed of. The claims from the fishermen was that the shark was somewhere between 115 feet to a staggering 300 feet. The men insisted that the water boiled as this beast swam past. And as if this salty old campfire story wasn't scaring you enough already, the men also all claimed together that the shark was a ghastly white, calling to mind the white whale from Moby Dick. Unfortunately, since it was the 19th century, we don't have a convenient TikTok to watch over and over and analyze frame by frame, so we have to take whatever scraps we can get, which is the word of a bunch of old lobster fishermen. It's entirely possible that, you know, a few beers deep and 12 hours in the sun would cause you to start to see anything. But by that same token, it could just have been likely that these men witnessed something thought long extinct. 